Hey guys, I'm Charan from Just 3 Things. This tutorial is a concise version of live stream that I conducted in Arendelle's Discord server. Check out Arendelle's channel for more procedural texturing tutorials. It's amazing. In the live stream, we made the mix RGB node using shader nodes. If you want to join the weekly live streams conducted by me and Arendelle, do feel free to join the Discord server. The link is in the description below. Before creating any design using nodes, it's good to find attributes like shapes. Here in the MixRGB node, we have like 6 rectangles with rounded corners. We also have circles. So let's make a node group that allows us to make rounded rectangles and circles. Without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Select the plane and add a material. Add a texture coordinate node and set it to object coordinate system. I am choosing this because its origin is at the center of the object. To do any sorts of mathematical operations on the axes, we need to separate them. So let's add a separate XYZ node. Now we can do any sorts of mathematical operations to the axes. Now let's start by making the node group for rounded rectangles. Rounded rectangles are nothing but rectangles with rounded corners. We can make them by using this function called smooth maximum. This function allows us to create rounded corners. Let me show you what smooth maximum does in the first place. Let's go to Desmos. Here you can see that I have two functions A and B. This is how A looks like and this is how B looks like. The max of A and B plots the largest value in both A and B and this is how it looks like. Whereas this one is a smooth max equation. When k equal to 0, it just works like max of A and B. But when we increase the value of k, you can see that the sharp corners get smoothed out. This is the function that we are going to use to make rounded rectangles. Let's go to Blender and try this out. You can try remaking the smoothmax function using math nodes, but we already have an inbuilt smoothmax function inside the math node. Let's use that for now. Plug in x and y to the two sockets. And this is how it looks. Here, the distance socket is nothing but the k in the smoothmax equation. By changing the distance, you can see that we are able to make the corners round. Since we'll be using this node setup several times and we'll be placing it in different locations, Let's add a socket that controls its location. Changing location in particular direction is nothing but adding or subtracting a scalar to that axis. Let's see what I mean by that using Desmos. Here we can see a sine graph. Now when we add or subtract something to x, we can see that the graph is shifting. Similarly, when you add or subtract something to y, you can see it's shifting along the direction. Let's implement this with nodes. We can simply use a vector add node to do this for us. It adds a vector to the three axes at the same time. So by changing x in the vector add, we can change its location along the x axis. In the same way, if we change the value of the y, we can see that the rectangle is moving in the y direction. We can use a mapping node, but vector add is computationally less expensive. Now we can control the location of the rectangle. But still, as you can see here, we don't have a rectangle yet. To make this look like a rectangle, let's try to mirror this along x-axis and also the y-axis. To do that, we can use an absolute node. Absolute node makes all the negative values positive, which will make the whole coordinate system positive and creates the same pattern in all four quadrants. Instead of using two absolute nodes for the x-axis and the y-axis, we can use the vector math node again and change the operation to absolute and place it after the add node. It takes care of all three axes at the same time. Now we can see that we made the rounded rectangle. We can control the width and the height by subtracting a value from the x axis and the y axis. So let's add a math node after x and y axis and change the operation to subtract. Now we can use the second socket of the subtract node to control the width and the height of the rectangle. Now we can see there is a gradient that's going from black to white, but we need a crisp edge. We can do that in many ways. One way is by adding a greater than node. What this node does is it checks all the points where the value is greater than the given threshold and rounds those to 1 and elsewhere to 0. Now let's select everything and press Ctrl G to make a node group. Drag the second socket of the add node to the group input so that we can change the location. Now let's add 
width and height sockets to the group input. Also pull in the distance socket of the smooth maximum node to the group input so we can control the rounding. Now we can drag the greater than node to the group output for using it as the mask. Now let's rename everything accordingly so we can understand it better. Now we completed making the rounded rectangle node group. Now let's make the circles group. Making circles is pretty easy with nodes. Let's add a vector math node and let's connect the object coordinates to it. Change the function to length. This will give you a gradient that is radially outwards from the origin. Now when we subtract a value from the length output using math node to subtract, we can see that the radius of the circle is changing. Just like before we had the gradient going on. To remove that and get a crisp edge, add a math node and set it to greater than and change the threshold to zero. This will make the outline crisp. We can use this as a mask. Now to change the location of the circle, we can use a vector add node just like before. By selecting everything, press Ctrl G to make a node group. Plug the second socket of the vector add node to the group input so we can control the location. Plug the second socket of the subtract node so that we can control the radius. Plug the output of the greater than node to the group output. Rename everything so that it makes it easier to understand. Now we are done with the part 1 of the tutorial. Now comes the interesting part. Let's make the shader editor using these two node groups. This second part will be all about rearranging and masking. Now let's change the size of the rounded rectangle so that it looks similar to mix RGP node and tweak the roundness just a bit. Let's give it some colors. To do that, let's add a mix RGP node. Use the mask as a factor. We need the black part of the mask to have the color of mix RGB. Mix RGB takes a black and white mask and assigns the top color to the black areas of the mask and bottom color to the white areas of the mask. Let's select the top color and by using the eyedropper, let's pick the color of the mix RGB from the user interface. This will give the color of mix RGB node to the all black areas. Let's change the second color to black. Now let's duplicate the node group and change the dimensions of the rounded rectangle so that it looks like the drop down menu. Now let's add this to the render. It's simple to do that. Let's add a mix RGB node and use the mask as a factor. We need to make the black areas to the color of the drop down menu. So select the top color and by using the eyedropper tool pick the color of the drop down menu. Now we can use this color output of the previous mix RGB node and plug it to the second socket of this mix RGB node. This will apply the previous output to the white areas leaving the black areas with the color of the drop down menu. We can see that the size and locations of the drop down menu are not looking anywhere close to the drop down menu. Anyway, we can change the size by changing the width and the height of the drop down menu and we can change the location along the axis by changing it in the location. So it's looking good so far. So this is how it works. We'll duplicate the node group, we'll use the mask as a factor and change the top color to the desired color. And we'll give the previous output to the second socket. So all the whites get the previous output. And we can change the location and size in the node group. Because this process is repetitive and time consuming, I'll speed it up. Now let's add the sockets. Let's use the circles group. We can change the radius here and let's add a mix RGB node and we can use a mask as a factor. Let's plug the previous output to the second socket and let's change the first color using the eyedropper to the socket color. We can change the location of the socket in the node group and place it accordingly. We have three more sockets. 
So we have to repeat this step three more times. I'll speed it up because it's the same thing. Now let's rearrange the nodes properly. Finally, we need to make the top border. To do that, let's add a separate XYZ node and connect the object corner system to it. Let's add a math node and change it to less than and use the second socket to place the mask accordingly. Now we need to mask out the border. To do that, let's use the first base mask of the node and let's add it to the less than node using a math node. We can see that we are able to separate the border but then we can still see the mask is not uniform. That's because we are adding 1 with 1 which gives us 2. To keep it uniform, let's clamp it. This will round the values which are greater than 1 to 1 and the values less than 0 to 0. Now let's add a mixRGB node and use this mask as a factor. Now connect the previous output to the second socket and in the first socket pick a color using an eyedropper tool for your border. And we are done. Finally let's add grids. To do this I will be using the checkers texture that I made in the previous tutorial. You can download the checkers node free from my gumroad. I will leave a link in the description. Let's append it. Go to file, append, navigate to the blend file and select the blend file. Go to the node tree and open checkers version 2.0. Now let's add the checkers node group. Shift A, search, checkers 2.0. Place it here. All we need to do is to play around with the radial offset. Let's increase this all the way up to 1. This will give us a look of grid lines. You can increase the scale. Now we can change the color in the node group. Let's change the whites to the grid color by using the eyedropper tool. Now we can add this to our render. For that we need to make a mask of our mixRGB node. We can do that by making use of color dodge. Add a mixRGB node and set it to color dodge. Plug the previous mixRGB node to the first socket and increase the second color to white. And now increase the factor to 1. We made a mask. Let's use this mask to mix the grid lines with the node we made. Add a mixRGB node and use the previous one as the mask. Plug the checkers texture to the top socket and the mixRGB with the full node set up to the second socket. That's it guys. I hope you all learned something in this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.